In today's video, I'm gonna explain what you should do when you bulk because you wanna look like this, but you go too far and you end up like this. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and uh, first things first, I got some exciting news. I'm working on some new audio equipment, some new video equipment, and some new locations. So I'm gonna be upgrading the content of this channel. So I, I appreciate you guys riding with me all the way to 300,000 subscribers, but it's about to get really good. Today's video, we're gonna talk about the topic of bulking, building muscle, how you can go too far, and what to do to reel it back in. And the question came from right here on my Instagram direct message, and it's a, it's a question that's very near and dear to my heart because for those of you guys that don't know, I am a 45 year old lifetime natural bodybuilder. I stand six foot three, currently walk around around 220 pounds, but I graduated high school at 155 pounds. And I could probably sprinkle in some pictures here. Although in 1992, when I was graduating high school, there wasn't a lot of evidence. We didn't have easy to use cameras. You had to go to the store and actually get that shit developed. So you understand, I don't have a ton of pictures, but I'll put some in here, but you see the point is, I was very interested in bulking and I thought, let's put on some muscle. So let's get into the question and explain what to do if it goes too far. So I have a question for you. I've been bulking seven months and I've gained too much body fat. I'm at 19% now. My current weight is 203. I'm naturally a skinny guy. My natural weight is 170, but I wanted to be bigger. My question is how can I reduce my body fat to say 15 to 12% while maintaining my weight? P.S. Once I reduce my body fat, I would like to get to slowly bulk up to 220. So to answer your question, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig into my history a little bit. You see, I had the same kind of experience as you. I wanted to bulk my way up to a certain weight and diet down to a weight that I thought was going to be really awesome for me. And so I actually decided to do a bodybuilding competition in 2007. And so I thought I'd bulk up and I bulked up to a solid 240, 250 pounds thinking that's going to really make my stage weight increase. Um, but the one thing you'll learn about bodybuilding as a natural is that you're not going to really increase your weight that much. So without knowing your height, I can safely say that you're never going to be 220 pounds at 12% body fat. Okay. That is some of the most elite body composition you'll ever see. And in fact, as someone who's both competed in, as a natural bodybuilder and coached natural bodybuilders at the highest level of the sport, including world champions. And I'll put some footage in here of Ray Clark, who's 6'1", probably 210 to 220 on stage. He has some of the most elite genetics, probably should have been an NFL linebacker, um, but ended up being a natural bodybuilder. But for most guys that compete in natural bodybuilding, you know, we're talking 160, 170 pounds on stage. So when you're talking about being 220 pounds as a natural person, um, and, and maybe you're not, maybe you're interested in getting involved in some anabolics. And I certainly, if that's something that you're interested in, there's a lot of good information around, around that. I'm not your guy for that stuff. Okay. I certainly appreciate that side of the sport as well. But what I want to do is give you some realistic expectations for what you can expect. So how can you decrease your body fat without losing weight? The idea that you could lose that much body fat, but not lose any weight, that is called recomposition. And that would require that you essentially lose body fat and add muscle at the same time. Now, this is a process that takes years, perhaps decades to reach your goal. So if you have it in you to put in that kind of effort, then perhaps, you know, that's something you can do. And I don't want to, I don't want to try to limit what's possible for you because at the biggest variation from person to person is genetics, right? Like, you know, I'm someone who is a very skinny person growing up, you know, graduating at 155 pounds out of high school at over six feet tall. You know, I just, I was never going to look like Ronnie Coleman or Arnold Schwarzenegger. Those people have elite muscle building genetics. And for anyone out there that, you know, wants to talk about steroids and this and that, listen, yes, they have an impact, but, the difference between me and Ronnie Coleman is in a couple cycles. Okay. That is an elite muscle building human. All right. And there are people on this planet that are just better at building muscle. They're more dense. You know, as someone who grew up playing a lot of sports, I've been around it. I can appreciate it. There are people that are faster, that are taller, that are quicker. It's just natural God given ability, right? It doesn't necessarily come down to what's in a vial. 
that stuff can 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 assist, but it's not going to make up the gap for terrible genetics. Okay, so the most important thing in my mind would be to put in a work for about five years, right? After about five years of eating like a bodybuilder, training with consistency, really honing your craft, you're probably gonna max out your kind of genetic potential in the sport. That doesn't mean that you can't get better, but you're not gonna get leaps and bounds better, okay? You're not gonna put on slabs of muscle after five years of training. So you're probably asking yourself, what do you do? Well, the obvious solution would be if it's something you're very much interested in, that's when you can get involved in anabolics, but you have to understand once you stop the anabolics, you're going to lose the progress that you made. Okay. So, you know, you can, you can look at bodybuilders from the past, people like Dorian Yates, Dennis Wolf, um, Lee Haney, who were at one time in their lives, these massive human beings. And now you look at them and guess what? They look amazing, but they're not walking around at 240, 250 pounds of, of lean muscle. They're back to a normal weight. So it all comes down to what your goals are. So where from you're currently at, you know, the way that I dieted down was I spent an entire year basically focused on a bodybuilding show. And I said to myself, I'm going to bulk up, put on the muscle and diet down. I wanted to be about 215 pounds on stage. And if I can dig up some pictures and videos, I'll put them on here. But in 2008, when I hit the stage and I actually won my novice bodybuilding class, I was only allowed to enter one class at that show. So I did novice bodybuilding. I won as a natural bodybuilder at six foot three and I was about 199 pounds. That's right, I was 16 pounds less than I wanted to weigh on stage. So I don't think until you diet down, you realize how much body fat the human body carries. And that's one of the huge takeaways I had. So really what it comes down to is how good are your muscle building genetics? Are you able to add muscle in a manner that is gonna allow you to reach your goals and do so in a natural manner? You know, the, really the only way to find out is to get in the gym and, and do it, you know, and you'll notice within a year or two, you'll notice and the people around you will notice and they'll give you feedback. And you can either listen to that feedback or you can tell them to go straight to hell. A lot of people thought I was foolish for thinking I could be a bodybuilder, you know, <laughs> when I told people that I was going to stop playing volleyball and basketball and baseball um, in, you know, my early 30s and I wanted to do a bodybuilding competition, a lot of them scoffed. Um, but they were my good friends and you know, your good friends are supposed to give you some shit when they think you're being foolish, but you know, it was a year well spent. And, um, as someone who's been kind of obsessed with lifting weights since a young age, it was exactly what I needed to do. And I knew in my heart it was the right thing for me. So that's what you got to find out is if this is going to be a long time adventure, because if you're always setting yourself with numbers and you're, you're building your success based on if you can get to 220, if you can get to 200 pounds, listen, I did that at an early age, but I had to unlearn that mentality. Okay. Now I focus more on what's going on in the mirror, how my clothes fit, how I feel at 45 years old. I want to feel good all the time. Okay. I train really hard in the gym so that I feel good outside of the gym. Okay. I want to have the muscle that I want to have, but I also don't have unrealistic expectations. And I don't expect that if I went back in time and told myself that I would never do the things that I was kind of thinking I would do, I still would have gone through it. Do I think it was worth it for me to bulk up to 250 pounds only to figure out that, you know, my stage weight would be 200 pounds? Yeah, absolutely. Because it's a process that I learned a lot about myself through. I learned that I don't feel good at 250 pounds. I, I couldn't even walk up a flight of stairs without taking deep breaths, right? So I found my happy place. My happy place is 220, 225, where I can, you know, still wear reasonably nice clothes. I still have a nice look to myself. But if I want to diet down and do a show, which I will in the future, I'm not that far away from it. And understanding that building muscle doesn't require putting on so much body fat that you don't even recognize the fact that you lift weights, right? It does not require that to be successful. You can, you can maintain a nice lean body composition because building muscle is a slow process. Putting on fat isn't. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll talk to you tomorrow.